Okay, get out of here. Um, so let's just start applying the parallel axis theorem for each part of the uh, cross section of the beam. Okay, so for the first part, the triangle. Now remember what I said about the triangle. We can com we can compare it to a rectangle, but how can we do it? Let's start doing some maths here. All right, so the parallel axis theorem equals for the okay. Remember this is for the triangle. Trying base times height cubed divided by 38 plus the area base times height obviously multiplied by dy squared divided by 2 now but divided by 2 because area of a triangle uh, base times height divided by 2 okay now because there are two triangles we say two times this whole thing Lo and behold, if you do some quick math here, we can remove unwanted numbers, and we can halve as... Ah, oh, darn it. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, this is divided by 36, my bad. Divided by 36. Okay. For a triangle, base times height cubed divided by 36. Okay, my bad. Sorry about that. And this would be, in the end... 18 base times height cubed divided by 18 because you are dividing this by 2 okay and removing that with that okay two applies to each and every number in this uh, one two okay applies to both of them plus base times height dy squared that's what it is in the end okay this is for the triangle so let's start actually substituting values let's just jump over here on this page ix triangle equals base of 30 okay let's quickly just show you what I'm doing this is a very bad depiction of the triangle sorry it's highly um, inaccurate not to scale at all okay so that's 30 really small 30s and a huge 30 here for some reason that's 30 apparently huh. all right um, <coughs> Yes, and another mistake I just picked out. Everyone makes mistakes in the end, guys. Sorry about that. Um, previously, uh, this is actually 30 times 120. Answer remains the same because I have it on my sheet here already. Sorry about that. I'm just rushing through this quickly. That's why. So that was 30. My bad. It's, it's base. Base. I got confused because that was the 90 there. This The scaling of this diagram is terrible. It's actually 30, the base here. Sorry about that. Let's get back to the question. So it's 30 times height of 120 cubed divided by 18 plus 30 times 120 area multiplied by uh, dy. Now, what is dy? The differential of d distance from the centroid of the distinct object that you picked out to the actual neutral axis. It's very wordy, but what I just said was it's just simply this distance here that distance centroid to centroid centroid of the triangle to the centroid of the overall object okay simply just that distance that's dy 40 take 50 10 10 squared 100 okay let's continue let's finish this off plus uh, remember you have to um, add everything so because we just did the parallax theorem for the uh, triangle let's do it for well, let's just say the rectangle is adding the two triangles together. You're going to do it again for the actual rectangle itself, the center, the central one. So plus base times height cubed divided by 12 for the rectangle. So it's going to be base of 30 times height of 120 cubed divided by 12 plus the area of that rectangle. This rectangle here, guys. This is the the middle one. Okay, so don't forget the middle rectangle. 30 times 120 multiplied by the differential the distance between both 100 because remember half the distance uh, to get to the centroidal of the rectangle half of the 120 and the differential distance from the neutral axis uh, again it's uh, 50 takes 60 absolute value 10 okay squared 100 uh, that's about it all right 
just quickly smash this into my calculator and we get an answer of this is no longer for the triangle. Get an answer of 7.92 times 10 to the 6. Okay, I'll just round that off. 7.92 times 10 to the 6 quadric millimeters. Okay. Don't forget the 10 to the 6. It's, it's important. There's a reason why I did that. Okay, moving on. Let's substitute into the flexor formula. We're done. Okay, this is the end. So, let's just snatch this formula here quickly and substitute our values into it. Alright. Now, the flexor formula equals the maximum moments, don't forget, 4.5x. If you don't remember, watch my part two again. So multiply by y distance. Now remember, uh, oh yeah, sorry, there is no remembering here to do. Uh, didn't tell you guys yet. Yeah, the question. Question is asking: Find the maximum allowable span if the stress due to bending is not to exceed 30 megapascals tension. Okay, Thir not to exceed 30 megapascals tension. The maximum allowable span. So what is the maximum allowable distance of the beam so that it does not exceed 30 megapascals in tension? So let's just actually work this out. Use 30 megapascals as tension. Um, so tension being stress. So this whole 4.5x multiplied by the tensile um, y distance. So what was the tensile y distance? Ut. Do you remember previously? So where's the UT? Yep, there it is. UT. UT was U1. U1, we already worked out. What was U1 again, guys? Don't forget. 50 millimeters. We worked it out before. Multiply by 50. Divided by... 7.92 times 10 to the 6. Okay, now, units. Now, the units here are bad. We were mixing units up quite a bit here. So to fix it all up, this is all you have to do, guys, okay? If you're working in kilonewton meters here for the maximum allowable uh, moments and you're working in millimeters for the distance, this 50 here, and dividing it by quadric millimeters, to solve this problem... All you have to do is multiply the denominator by 10 to the negative 12. Okay? So let's do that. 4.5x multiplied by 50 divided by... Okay, now we're doing times the denominator by 10 to the negative 12. This is to fix the units, okay? Because the units are highly um, off chart here, let's just say. We get an answer. Negative six because negative. Okay, so we get an answer of twenty-eight point zero uh, twenty-eight point four zero nine megapascal. Uh, sorry, four zero nine. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Twenty-eight point four zero nine x. Remember, tension thirty is our maximum allowable. Um, uh, tensional stress x inevitably will equal 1.056 meters do you remember x the unknown distance of our beam initially that was our distance there it is we worked it out done and the first part of the question quickly do the next part what was the minimum allowable compression is that what it said yep okay so what would be the minimum compressive stress okay, let's just quickly do that now, quickly, because it's talking about compression, and we, we just worked out previously what our overall distance of the beam is, 1.065. So we'll substitute 1.056 here, okay, because it was an X, we're substituting there. And for the compression, it is U2 now we're working with, U2, the upper quadrant. So it's 50 multiplied, sorry, 50, um, yeah, 120 subtracts 50, we get 70. 70 here, we get an answer of 42 megapascals in the end. This is a maximum allowable, uh, maximum allowable, uh, sorry, minimum allowable compressive stress. Okay, thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about these slow uploads; just been busy with things in our world.
Uh, hopefully I have another upload in the next two days. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.